Hello. So today I wanted to share a few thoughts about uh, another of the stories that Jesus told, the Jesus stories. And this is um, one of the parables he told, and it's all about new things. Now, if I'd asked you seven weeks ago, eight weeks ago, how do you cope with change, with new things? Um, you might have said something along the lines of, well, I either love them or I find it really hard. Um, I don't like new things. I don't like to learn new things. And if I'd been quite specific and asked you, well, how do you feel about technology? Like doing online meetings and using YouTube. Now, you might have been really fine with that already. But I think a lot of people, a lot of you, would have been like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't know what to do. Um, so I'm just going to not use it. What a difference seven or eight week, weeks makes. I, I I just think it's absolutely amazing and you guys are so awesome for embracing technology and I am loving hearing stories even now of first time Zoom users and connect groups using Zoom and people calling in to Zoom. Oh, it's just, it's just amazing. But if, it, if I'd asked you seven weeks ago, how do you cope with change? How do you cope with new things? I think most of us, in, in different ways and for different reasons, not just technology, find it really tough sometimes. Find it really tough going from what we know and what we're comfortable with to the new thing. And it isn't always that the new thing's better, but often it can be. Often there's new possibilities, new things, new places to explore, that kind of thing. And the story that I want to look at, the Jesus story I want to look at, is all about new things. It's the parable of the wine and the wineskins from Luke's gospel. And if you've got Bibles, and we're, I'll put the uh, scripture up in a bit, but if you've got Bibles, do turn to uh, the end of chapter 5 in Luke's gospel. That's where you'll find this parable. Now this is such an amazing parable. Jesus is, is at this point, he's doing his thing. He's just kind of started his ministry. He's going around healing people and, and ushering in the kingdom of God in all these different ways. And people are noticing. And in fact, just before Jesus shares this parable, he's found eating with tax collectors, the most hated and despised people in the country at the time. And, and the Pharisees uh, and those the experts in religious law are kind of spitting feathers. Why do you eat and drink with such scum, they say? And they're kind of this, there's this conversation going on and this thought going on that the Pharisees and the religious teachers they're seeing Jesus do these new things and and they can't quite fit it into their understanding of who God is uh, and what they're waiting for they're waiting for salvation a messiah deliverance for Israel and and there's this discussion about fasting and, and it's all to do with that and then Jesus tells this story this parable no one puts new wine into old wineskins for the new wine would burst the wineskins spilling the wine and ruining the skins new wine must be stored in new wineskins but no one who drinks the old wine seems to want the new wine the old is just fine they say now remember our method of reading the jesus stories we asked those two questions. What, what are the points of reference that meant the original hearers could catch the point that Jesus was trying to make? And then interpreting that for now, what's Jesus calling us to do? What's that punch that we need to catch? So let's start with wineskins. Everyone knew about wineskins because everyone drank wine. And the thing with wineskins is that when you put freshly made wine in, it carried on fermenting a bit in the skin. And this would create gas. And that's excellent, actually, in this context, because it kept the wine protected and it allowed you to store it for a certain period of time. But it was fine as long as the wineskin that you poured it in was able to expand a bit because of course when it created the gas the, the process of fermentation it would expand a bit 
And so it's quite obvious to those listening that if you put new wine into old wineskins, wineskins that had already stretched and expanded once and they'd gone hard and there was no room for more expansion, there would be an explosion would be bursting the kind of explosion interestingly that was already happening where jesus was bringing in god's kingdom with his ministry healing and forgiveness and grace and kindness that was already starting to cause a little explosion in israel and that's why he says new wine must be stored in new wineskins and and actually that would be common sense everyone would have said yeah Okay, And they would have known that it's because the wine will be spilt and the old skin's ruined. But isn't it interesting, actually, that Jesus cares about the wine, which we know is the treasure, it's the move of the Holy Spirit, the new thing that Jesus is initiating, but he also cares about the old wineskins. I'm sure if you're anything like me, you've heard this this parable, this story preached on a lot. And often it's used in the context of, of needing to change structures or institutions or get rid of tr- old traditions or like for new churches to be formed because the old church, whatever that is, can't take this new move of the spirit or, or to ditch the old way of doing things because God is on the move and, and they can't hack it. Jesus cares as much about the old skins as he does for the wine. He doesn't say, don't pour new wine into old wine skins because then the, new, the wine will spill. He says the wine will spill and the old wine skins will break. You have to get rid of them. So it kind of begs the question for me, if the Holy Spirit is the new wine, then what are the wine skins? Are they structures and rules? Are they institutions like the Pharisees or or church? Or are they something different? I think the people listening are the wineskins. You and me, we are the wineskins. And that if the wine is the Holy Spirit poured out by God, it's about whether we are ready for the new things of God. The Pharisees, and quite frankly, many Jewish people at the time, were clearly old wineskins. And just because they they couldn't see who Jesus was, and they largely rejected him, it didn't mean that God had kind of given up on them, or had finished with them and was ready to discard them. And that's important because you and I can be old wineskins too. Everything that's familiar to us, we enjoy. Not wanting to leave our comfort zones, not willing to trade what's comfortable and achievable for something that can only be done by taking a risk and growing in faith. Like not sharing our faith with others, not giving sacrificially to the church, not giving thanks to God even when things are tough. That's old wineskin behaviour. We know, we know that we can struggle with that. And yet, I don't know about you, but I want to be filled with God's Holy Spirit more. I want to experience a move of God. I want to see a revival and a renewal, firstly in me, but in our church and in our community. I want some of the new wine that Jesus is talking about. I want God to pour out his new wine, a new move of the spirit into me. I want to see God's kingdom come here. But in order to do that, says Jesus, I need to be a new wineskin. Do you want to be a new wineskin or an old wineskin? If you want to be a new wineskin, here's two things that Jesus is calling you and me to do. And the first is dead simple. Stop enjoying the old wine. Jesus says in in the last verse in this story, he says, No one who drinks the old wine seems to want the new wine. The old is just fine, they say. It's that familiarity 
we we like what we know and actually we're comfortable with familiarity and so the first thing to do is to position ourselves to receive God's new wine his new move and to do that we need to hold the stuff the things that we're comfortable with we need to hold on to them lightly so this is about being willing to take risks in our faith to pray bigger prayers than we've been praying to do things following God's lead whether that's through uh, what he's calling us to do in scripture or by the Holy Spirit and just a note the Holy Spirit never contradicts scripture but often it will be a bit more specific a bit more context driven to do stuff outside our comfort zone to share our faith to increase our giving to get into the habit of giving thanks all the time to speak hope when everyone else is speaking fear is living out the truth that says following Jesus isn't supposed to be comfortable and it comes down to that that kind of bottom line of our faith grows when it's exercised and it doesn't get exercised when we don't need it our faith grows when it's exercised and it doesn't get exercised when we don't need it so we need to be putting ourselves in positions where we need faith and that's uncomfortable so the first thing is being willing to take risks in our faith kind of letting go of the stuff we're comfortable with and the second thing that Jesus is calling you and me to do is this. Now, the Pharisees were wise. They knew God's word as it was then, back to front. They knew exactly what Israel's deliverance and salvation should look like, or at least they thought they did. They were hardened as old wineskins in something from yesterday. And they were so fixated on what they knew and understood so hard that they completely missed God's son, the person that they were waiting for, right in front of them. The actual deliverance and salvation. And if we want to be new wineskins, we need to press into who God is, not who we think God is. We need to press into God not just press into ideas about God and by pressing into God we'll be softened up I read it's like being immersed in the water of God's word and worship and in the oil of the Holy Spirit that's how they renewed old wineskins they softened them up, ready to go again, ready to expand again, immersing them in the water of God's word and worship and in the oil of the Holy Spirit. We need to be prepared to leave the comfortable behind and spend time, more time, pressing into God. And honestly, for most of us, there is no better opportunity than right now. There are fewer distractions about, no live sports, not much on TV. I don't know about you but the five o'clock news conferences are getting pretty dull there's fewer activities to do there's less commuting less traveling think of actually the time that we've got and it may not feel like that because we're so good at filling time with stuff but this right now is an incredible opportunity to put changes in place in our lives to put jesus right at the center and to be new wineskins ready for a fresh outpouring of God's Holy Spirit in our lives and in our community. As a church, as a community, as a family, we long to be a beacon of hope. And I think it starts right here, positioning ourselves as new wineskins ready for a new move of God. Amen.